All right, folks, um, I think before I make today's video, I need to put a disclaimer on the screen. Um, I'm pretty nervous about making this one. There is a lot of negativity surrounding the overarching Halo community right now, and it's understandable. I empathize completely. I know why you're frustrated, but I've seen this bad trend recently where defenders of Halo Infinite, defenders of 343, receive a lot of backlash and a lot of hate. I've been thinking about making this video for a long time, and I've been put off from doing it because my channel has always been a positive place. And I really don't want to bring negativity into this channel. I want to openly and expressively talk about why I want to defend and support Halo Infinite. But doing that opens me up to a lot of hate from people who don't agree with me. And it's totally fine not to agree with me. But I just ask that if you're going to leave a dislike or if you're going to leave a negative comment, you at least listen to my side of the story first. Because... After six months of being with Halo Infinite, I think it's honestly time we give 343 a second chance and we are patient with the game. So folks, you might all be familiar with this image. It's been a controversial one at best. And I want to state outright from the beginning, I've had a pretty bad time over the last six months with Halo Infinite, particularly being a smaller YouTube channel and a YouTube channel directed at the merchandise of Halo. It's been a real struggle to see it go downward from the moment it released. We've not received a single new map since launch and it's been painful. The roadmap hasn't existed until now. The customization and locked armor cores and monetization of the game has been horrendous. It's not been enjoyable at all, especially for people who have waited six years for this game, who have defended 343 on forums, and since the moment Halo Infinite was first teased, everyone praising it that it was the return of Halo just for a half-baked game to come out. I totally understand. I really do. And I've been a Halo fan my entire life. I've had this Halo YouTube channel for 10 years. I've run Halo gaming conventions in the UK. It's been one of the absolute core foundations of my life. And I have a lot to thank for Halo. My friends, my support structures in life, all of my collectibles and hobbies, being able to find a voice on YouTube, being able to find a passion and a hobby. Everything has been thanks to Halo in my life. So believe me, I am one of you when Halo Infinite came out and I saw the hate online and I saw how terrible the monetization was. I was one of the first people to hop on my YouTube and use my voice in a pretty negative way, saying that the Halo customization was hot garbage. And it was hot garbage. And I stand by the words I said back then. But when I look back at that video that I released just as Halo Infinite was coming out, I don't really like how negatively I was talking about the game. And at the same time, negativity can be very constructive. The practice practical application of all of our negativity towards Halo Infinite. And we can see going into season two that a lot of the small changes like drop pod updates and cross core customization are thanks to our voices being heard from 343 Industries. And voices are clearly more heard when they're talking negatively. I mean, negativity is definitely a way to bring in an audience. Definitely that's still going forward with YouTubers uh, talking about season two, which I, it really disappoints me, you know. We all knew just before season two was announced that it probably wasn't gonna hit like we wanted to. I don't think most people expected it to still be another six months and believe me, that does suck. But I really do think that the Halo Infinite community needs to think about the way we structure our criticism. And really, I'm not calling anyone out. I respect a lot of the Halo YouTubers out there. I respect people like Sean W for the commitment he has. But looking at the overarching community and how we talk to 343, you know, when you join one of their live streams and you look at the live chat, it is filled with hate. And uh, it it makes me also concerned about the mental well-being of the team at 343 Industries. You know, they've said recently in their blog post, priority zero is team health. And I get that because I don't imagine the health at 343 is very good. Particularly people who have worked on the game for six years. It must have been brutal for the team at 343 and then especially brutal when they saw the hate online. It seems to me online there has been a shockingly small amount of praise given to the campaign of Halo Infinite, which is like one of the best campaigns I've ever played in my life. Like, it's insane to me. I know a lot was cut from it, but still the polished 
final product was insanely good. It also didn't help that the multiplayer released early before the campaign, so by the time the campaign released, there was already a piping hot layer of negativity surrounding Halo Infinite. So much so that the Halo Reddit got taken down, man. Ugh. It was a rough launch. It was a really, really rough launch. I do think that a lot of the negativity we put forward was productive, you know, in things like reducing the time taken to progress through the battle pass and 343 saying that they're committed to releasing a proper progression system in the future. Criticism and suggestions and feedback can be very good. Going on Twitter and tagging Joseph Staten and other developers at 343 and just spamming them with hatred is so insanely counterproductive. Can you imagine how much more the productivity of 343 must have been reduced when people or staff members just saw the hate online and really had no drive to go to work in the morning other than improving the game. And that's where we come to today. When this video releases, it will be one day until season two Lone Wolves launches. When you search Halo Infinite on YouTube, there's still videos talking about how terrible season two looks. And I get it, it doesn't look amazing. It's just three game modes, one of them we've already had as a staple in Halo and two new maps for another six months. It's not good, but at this point, we've made our voices heard. I think we've got all of the tweaks that we needed implemented into season two. You know, the battle pass looks legendary now. It looks really, really fun. A beta for Forge is coming. Co-op campaign is coming. Store prices have been reduced. There's a multiplayer story. The drop pod updates will provide monthly tweaks to Halo Infinite instead of waiting six months for a nerf on the Mangala. We can't just keep on being negative. We have to get to a point where we see that 343 is really trying. I know a lot of you will have seen this video already, but I have to let it play because this is Joseph Staten who has worked on Halo since the Bungie days talking about the state of the game and whether or not 343 is happy. Please do give it a watch. We'll be right back after these messages from our Lord Joe Staten. Well, one thing to make really clear, none of us inside of 343 look at this roadmap and are happy with it. All of us want to be doing things faster to deliver more content. You know, we still have this desire to get into a rhythm, a healthy rhythm where we can ship a season every three months. So for us internally, it was painful, frankly, to communicate this roadmap with a season that was going to run for another six months. We have to prioritize going after quality of life issues that are impacting the game right now. That's really how we're organizing ourselves to go after that, that work and why we're extending the season now. But to, again, to underline this, none of us looks at that and says, great, six months seasons are awesome. They're not. They're really, they're not. And we need to get ourselves in a position where we can deliver uh, more frequently. And we're working on that too. Thank you, Joseph Staten. You uh, are a breath of fresh air in this Halo community. And when you're talking from your heart there, you look tired, you look jaded by this process and I, I really do empathize for you and your team. I really, really do. And I think a lot of the criticism has been constructive so far on Halo Infinite, but I do think it's time to step away from that negative mindset. 343 clearly doesn't want this. They clearly don't want two maps and another six months of a season, but they clearly don't have a choice right now. Negativity can be productive, but when you continue down that road, it toxifies the game, it alienates fans, it makes them feel like they don't want to be as much of a part of the franchise and for newcomers looking in say you've never played halo before you see a sponsored blog post or on facebook and then you check the comment section you see how negative it is and honestly i might not try it it might push away fans before they've even begun their journey through halo that brings me on to my next point halo is forever halo's immortal halo is a absolute behemoth of a franchise and when people make these videos saying Halo's dead, I can't help but laugh. If Apex Legends had launched and had the first six months without any content, it probably would have died. But Halo Infinite is something else, man. Like Halo's something else. Just because it has a bad six months, just because it has a bad two years, doesn't mean it's ever gonna die. MCC is the perfect example of this. MCC launched as a trash heap of a game, an absolute dumper fire. B dumper fire? Bump? Dumpster fire, <laughs> dumpster fire, dumpster fire. And I'm not trying to say that that is a roadmap that's to be desired. I'm just saying that Halo is immortal. Halo will never die. When you talk to people online or IRL about Halo, it hits different than any other game. You know, everybody has their favorite games. Everybody has their small franchises that they're attached to, but Halo, it, it sparks some kind of different discussion. You know, when people talk about Halo, they talk about this 
absolute love for the characters and the community and the multiplayer and the campaign. It's a reason I've been collecting this merchandise for 10 years. It's just immortal. Tell me any other franchise. Oh my God, the leg just fell off. Oh my God. I was about to say, tell me any other franchise that can produce something like this. And the leg fell off on my baby. Oh no. I can't even put it down now. It's only on three legs. Oh God. Oh, my poor baby. The point is, tell me that a game franchise other than Halo could produce a community that supports Mega Constructs, a building blocks toy for like 13 years. It just wouldn't. Halo is something else. And that's why I really do believe that no matter the blunders of 343 Industries, Halo will never die. I think it's just time we start defending it for what it really is. A rebirth of Halo, a return to form that we've not had since Halo Reach. Really the first massive full 10 out of 10 that 343's delivered in terms of what Halo fans have always been saying they need from 343. Yes, we don't have a good roadmap. Yes, we don't have content that's dropping as regularly as a live update service should. Almost every criticism that's been given to Halo 4 and 5 has been addressed in Halo Infinite. You can't argue that. And 343 were clearly trying their best to bring this game back to the state that Halo fans wanted. I've never blamed 343 for starting down the road with Halo 4. Halo 4 came out, 343 said, fair enough, you probably don't like that. We're gonna try a slightly different approach in Halo 5. Oh, you don't like that? We're gonna totally scrap it, you know? Two strikes and we're out. We're gonna give our best shot for the third strike, even though two strikes would be out, so they wouldn't have a chance for the third strike. Anyway, the, <laughs> the fact is, 343 still delivered a good game. I think the only progressive way forward is to start to be positive about the game. Because if we're negative, the productivity of the staff is way lower. They don't know what direction to take it in. They're just gonna be pushing out content over quality. And I think the quality of Catalyst and Breaker looks very promising. And the final tweaks on a map must take absolutely forever. The sound design and even the backdrops and the vistas must just take a generation to complete. I don't know the first thing about game design, but I look at those maps and I'm like, geez, they must be uh, a, couple, a couple of hundred hours work there. We have to accept that 343 are the pilots of this franchise now, and we have to put more faith in them. There were insane delays behind the scenes at 343. They weren't allowed to be in the same office for well over a year, but now HCS, the Halo Esports, is phenomenal to watch. Season two, Lone Wolves is coming with a multiplayer story with a lot of good tweaks and updates with two new maps and three new game modes. I'm personally very excited about Last Spartan Standing, very excited about Land Grab and King of the Hill. And I'm going to give 343 a second chance and I'm gonna be patient with them for the next six months. And if season three comes out and it's another six months and they really haven't delivered in some of the promises, we'll have a different discussion. But I put my faith in 343 Industries today and I hope that after watching this, you might have a slightly more positive outlook on the studio. As always, thank you very much for tuning in today. This was another video with The Domain. Thank you so much for the support on this video and let me know in the comments down below how you do personally feel. You know, after you've watched this, if you wanna give this video a dislike, if you wanna stick it to me in the comments, you can do that, but I at least hope that you saw me through to the end and heard what I had to say. Even the weekly challenges have been more enjoyable to complete recently. Yeah, I, I'm. That's that's about all I had to say. Uh, you stay awesome. You stay safe out there, folks. And I'll see you in Lone Wolves season two.